Good morning, this is Aggie and you're watching my favourite beauty picks from February on my website alromroll.com. Hello beautiful people, I am well aware that it is no longer February and it's quite a way into March at the moment here in the UK and everywhere else in the world. It has been unseasonably sunny at the moment in the UK. We've had a few little grey days at the moment but last week was up to about 18 degrees and I had to wear a lot of sun cream on my face because I did get a little bit pink. So I'm feeling like spring has sprung and the colour folk that I am usually resists the kind of cute floral pastel colours that this season is really about but in this video I'm going to really explore that kind of temptation in my beauty routine and review some products I've really really loved using over the month of February. For the past two weeks I have been interning at Beauty Mar, which is a wicked concept run by absolutely wonderful people. If you ever have the opportunity to work with their team I would take it straight up. Beauty Mart was created by Anna Marie Solovey, who is the ex beauty director of Vogue and Millie Kendall MBE who created Ruby and Millie and brought iconic brands like Shimura and Tweezerman to the UK while she was still in her early 20s which to me as someone who wants to forge themselves a career in the beauty industry is absolutely crazy and I had the honour of working alongside those two ladies and the rest of their wonderful team including Yanar Alkayat who is a fantastic journalist an absolute digital brain box who is the, currently the online editor of Beauty Mart. Pick numero uno on the skincare frontier and the only skincare pick for me this month is the Hollywood California Glam Glow Super Mud Clearing Treatment. This is the fanciest and most hyped up face mask on the kind of beauty market at the moment with the exception of the Omorazika, I can't pronounce that, I'll have to ask my Hungarian friend how to pronounce that and it's stocked currently at Beauty Mart and if you go and ask one of their sales assistants or look at their amazing copy written by Anna Marie Solovey on their website they'll probably give you a far better explanation than me about what it actually does in terms of how the clay gets the stuff out of your pores, pulls out of your pores and cleans up your complexion for me I'm just gonna hype it up because it did do wonders for my skin and I love it when I actually invest in a product and it blooming works and you see results straight up if I show you the colour of this mask in the tub, it's quite grey, it looks similar to the Origins charcoal mask and I think, I haven't seen it in the flesh, but similar to the Amorazika, I can't pronounce that, you know the one, um, thermal cleansing mask. And I think for some people that's really scary because they're used to looking at like green things and green reminds us of natural products and that's not an aloe vera and that's going to be soothing. But actually it was a surprisingly light formula. It felt exfoliating as I put it on but it didn't tug or pull my skin and my skin can get quite dry and irritated and pretty pissed off pretty damn quickly. Dried super fast which is lovely because I actually don't like waiting around with loads of rubbish on my face because I touch my face a lot and then I get it in my hair and on my hands and then I get it on my nice white bed sheets which you can see at the moment and it just pisses me off so I just kind of buffered it off very gently with a muslin cloth or a wet flannel nice and warming you get a nice bit of extra exfoliating bump from doing that and I immediately saw that comedones and blackheads and whiteheads were coming to the surface of the skin I was like whoopee because I want to deal with them now I don't want to have them like looming over my skin for the next couple of weeks and then having to try XYZ 10 different products to try and deal with each skincare concern so super happy I know that the price tag is hefty but this is one of the few products that I'd say paying over £40 for a product is worth it because you don't actually need that much for a whole application a really good tip I've heard from a couple of beauty bloggers is to get an old foundation brush to apply a clay mask with because you get that precision of your application and you can thin the layer so it's equal whereas when you're doing your fingers it's always going to be a bit splodgy and thicker in some places more than others. Thoroughly enjoyed using it, I've seen excellent results and I'm pretty hooked. So if you have reasons why you don't like this mask or why there are other ones which kind of fill this bill or have a better price tag please let me know because I'm pretty sold on this and I think it may have to be one of those purchases that I justify to myself each month. This is a nice little pot. I know some people 
far preferred tubes because it's less messy but I think if you're going to apply this with a foundation brush the pot just is good so I would head to Beauty Mart and pick that up because they will be far better than me in consulting whether or not this product is going to work for your skin type the next product, which I don't often include in my videos, is a hair care product. I think this is because I'm incredibly fussy about what goes into my hair because my hair is kind of like a teenager. Like, it's full of rubbish and it gets pissed off at anything and everything. And it does, like, it never wants to do what it's told. So, that's my analogy. I heard one of my favourite analogies ever for hair on the man repeller the other day which was called junk food hair and Leandra Medine was talking about it doesn't matter how much stuff she puts in her hair her hair just kind of sucks it up and it kind of has the metabolism of a teenager so I'm really liking these kind of um, teenager hair analogies at the moment because you, you see all these shampoos with unruly and can't be tamed and I think it just ties in really nice that's my little inner journalist coming out there this product is the Percy and Reed you can't see because of the light oh Wonder Balm. It has a nice illustration on it. I know that they stock these in John Lewis and Percy Reed has been in there for a while. I got this free with my Elle magazine subscription. It's full size and it's worth £18. It is 75 millilitres of product. I thought I'd give this a go because it was free and that's just the cheap bitch that I am. But I was actually pleasantly surprised. I don't use many styling products in my hair because I tend to do a nice blowout and make that last a good few days. I'm a big dry shampoo user and I'm also a big scruffy bun wearer. And so I don't try and play games with my hair a lot. There are in the magazine some fantastic suggestions of how to use this product and I've actually taken a few of them up and it's ticked all the boxes in terms of making looks like kind of slicked back at the front and then volumised curls achievable in with one product which I think is fantastic if you don't have much time. It's also been described as a hair foundation so they're probably taking the term foundation there to be take your hair to a level upon which to add further styling products and I think that's just about it it's thinner in consistency than I thought it would be it's kind of like a fluid they call it a multitasking balm at the back and it says to help you give deep breath moisture shine smoothness definition softness light hold high humidity protection and manageability okay humidity protection I don't really agree with because it's been quite muggy in the city the past two weeks and I've been wearing this every time I wash my hair and I'm still getting quite a lot of frizz but in terms of making one a blow dry last longer in terms of where you curl your ends under it's absolutely fantastic and I far prefer it to dousing my hair with hairspray after I've done a style I also really like taking like the tiniest bit so maybe like a five pence blob on my hands warming up to my fingers and making it like give a little bit of texture to my ends here you can see they're quite piecey and that's purely from this one product I haven't had to stick any crazy like wax spray or any of the other kind of jazz they tell you to achieve that kind of like Parisian undone hair look it's all in one big tube and I think that's fantastic because it kind of takes the fuss out of having kind of my favorite undone hairstyles now moving on to makeup I think this section might surprise you if you know me well because I've taken a few risks this month and they have absolutely paid off. My first product is to do with my kind of favourite area of my face which is eyebrows. I love a strong brow. I loved them before Cara was doing her thing and I'm naturally blonde so I have very very light brows and have been tinting and shaping my brows myself for a very long time as a result of chronic disappointment when I let anyone else get their hands on them. This product is the Maybelline New York Brow Drama Brow Sculpting Mascara and I think it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It has this incredible little spherical mascara like brush which is perfect. I don't know how good it would be if you had thinner brows but if you have quite thick brows like I do it's kind of the perfect size and it administers a kind of semi sheer butt tinted gel brow formula which can help you style your brows so like if you want to do like a brushed up feral brow look which is all over the catwalks you can do that if you just want to have a little bit more definition or you've got patchiness or your brows are lighter along the arch than they are in the middle or at the ends which is incredibly common it's just a fantastic little product maybe it's incredibly affordable another tip i'd have is if you have never tinted your brows before and you want to go for quite a dramatic look so you've already got a nice big shape so you're very very blonde or even red headed you could buy two of these 
My younger sister uses the medium brown one, which I like sometimes to do a more natural look where my brow tint is kind of fading. And you could try them on each one. And then when you go to your beautician to have your treatment, you could say, I prefer this shade or this shade doesn't work for me. And they can look at how they can recreate that perfect shade for you. My next product is another kind of overly hyped product from Maybelline, which I think is worth it. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, which all over the internet is kind of headed up as a dead dupe for the NARS Creamy Light Concealer. I love this stuff. I put it under my eyes and then I buff it in with a Sonia Kastrick mini flat-ended kabuki brush, which I found in the offices at Beauty Mart, which is absolutely incredible. And I'm very, very excited for Sonia Kastrick brushes just to come to the UK because I want to try them all. So, less about the brush, more about the concealer. It comes with a doe foot applicator. It's marketed as having a gel-like consistency. That sounds terrifying and I completely ignore it because I think what they're trying to get at is it's sheer and buildable but it's also slightly light reflective. So I use it around my under eyes and it doesn't cake. That may be because I'm just buffing it in right with a nice little brush. But good coverage, like very buildable, you can create very nice thin layers. It also covers redness and it's also really good on blemishes but again I'd buff it out because when you kind of splodge it on on your face like you know on a blemish or on some redness it can kind of just like patch up you do need to buff it around and push out the colour there's a great great like fantastic gospel light video on Lisa Eldridge's blog about covering acne or extreme blemishes that I made my younger sister with acne watch and it has completely changed my perception of how I should be covering up my blemishes. Incredibly affordable, I think this is about six or seven pounds. There are currently lots of three for two deals on with makeup in Boots and Superdrug so if you've got a lunch hour and you're looking for something that's going to change up your facial makeup routine I would pick this guy. My negative would be that the shade range is not great especially if you have a pink or red undertone. They're quite sallow shades. This is the lightest shade I think it's called 10 and then I know they have 15 and maybe because I was shopping quite a small super drug they didn't have the full shade range but this is really quite yellow for me but luckily because I tend to put a tiny bit of graduate tan on my face, it's working. But I'd really recommend if you are going to buy it, you know, doing the old trick, you know, putting some on, going out in the street, looking on your phone, looking in the mirror before you buy it. I'm just on a drugstore kind of mode at the moment. I've been incredibly impressed by Bourgeois this month. I think that is off the back of the exciting UK launch coming soon of this product. These are the Bourjois Rouge Edition Lip Velvets and they are a creamy, matte, ultra pigmented lip stain that lasts. And I can vouch for this because they came into the Beauty Mart offices two weeks ago and we are absolutely hooked on them and we're so excited that we're going to be stocking our selected edit of shades in April. And you don't need to sign up for Bourjois' waiting list and they are absolutely fantastic. When I first think about a matte lip, the first thing I fear is dryness and chalkiness and cakiness. When you open these up, you can kind of instantly tell that they're not going to be causing any of those maladies on your mouth. They are super creamy, super pigmented. They come in the most beautiful colours. This one currently is called Eau to Framboisois which is a play on the French framboise for raspberry and I think raspberry just about sums it up. It is a perfect pink toned reddish shade. It's kind of like red for scaredy cats and I like that because I'm, when it comes to colour I'm definitely a scaredy cat. I can't wait for these products to come out. I want to buy all of them and that's incredibly unlike me so I am a true convert. Bow down to you bourgeois. So off the back of enjoying their creamy lip stains with a matte finish I also tried their Shine Edition lip products, which I think the packaging is just really cute. I don't know if it's because I love mint green at the moment, but they are almost dead dupes for the Yves Saint Laurent Rouge Velup lip stains. Right down to the way they come out the tube, with a nice flat top. They are a sheer wash, which is almost the wrong word, sheer shiny conditioning colour and I think they're great for every day. If you are running an errand and you've got a little bit of tan on your face and maybe you've done your brows but you want something that's gonna 
make people think you're looking a bit pretty or a tiny bit more polished than you really, really are. These, these are just great. I have the shades 26, which is a Bardo beige. It says beige democratic, which I think is I kind of play on democratic, so like one beige to suit them all. Which I think is super polished and looks wicked with kind of a 60s cat eye, but really minimal and high fashion. And then the shade 27, which is far more pink. In the shade... Ooh, oh my doll. I like that. If you didn't know, a little inside the secret, bourgeois products are made in the same factory as Chanel products. Which is probably why their blush is so iconic. So, I'm wrapping it up on my favourite products from February and early March. If you're interested in Beauty Mart and Beauty Mart's products, please check out their wicked online shopping platform, thisisbeautymart.com. And if you want to see extensive reviews of any of the products mentioned in this video, I'm going to be featuring some of them in new blog posts coming very soon this week on my blog, alromroll.com. It was wicked to speak to you all. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you soon.